The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. So we're outside Woodstock, Ontario with market agronomist for Pride, Ken Kerr, and I want to talk about what's going on out here. Um, it's cold, it's been long, but I know there's something that warms your heart, and that's 300 bushels of corn per acre, and you've harvested a few of those plots this fall. Yes, uh, so yeah, it's been uh, a little bit heartwarming to see some good corn yields in my zone, but uh, you mentioned the operative words with harvest, which has been long, and now it's turned cold, it's snowy. Uh, there was a lot of wet in between there in October and November, the, the brutality that is this harvest in the in the London Woodstock corridor and areas beyond continues. Uh, as you can see behind me, the streamers moved in, and we're uh, we're snowed out of this field for the uh, for the day with some plugged up sieves in the combine. Just too much snow in the corn. So, as far as high yielding corn, yeah, uh, for the most part, my zone stretching from Exeter, St. Thomas, over to to Niagara Falls, and. And into the Toronto region, the yields are pretty good to uh, to certainly above average. Uh, the lighter soils that suffered the last two years in the droughts of 2011-2012 uh, really super yields with all the the rainfall we've had down there and moderate summer temperatures, and that's where those sky high yields have come from. Uh, we pulled a couple plots that are uh, just strip trials like this, where we've pulled a variety out of there that's run 300 bushels. Uh, pretty amazing stuff to see to see a corn crop like that. Really a product of, uh, again, the, uh, the rainfall in that area, especially early on. Uh, good planning jobs and early season stand establishment. Uh, good fertilization. And then uh, outstanding kernel set early on and then good pollination to set all those kernels. And then when you throw uh, good management at it, if the field was able to support all those kernels to produce yield, you came out with a pretty phenomenal number. So really cool to see and, and really happy for those guys given that the last two years were pretty tough in those areas. Now Ken, you mentioned right, you need, from a starting perspective, you need good dirt, you need good genetics. Yep. Um, some of the other top yields you've seen, you know, what are those similar factors that you've seen in those fields? Yeah, so when I look at top yields uh, in our 300 bushel project or now the Pride Seeds Advantage Acre initiative, uh, the messaging from the last two years and our conclusions 2011-2012 continue. And the use of fungicide has been pivotal this year. Uh, basically every site that we've done, fungicide and corn is paying to some degree. Uh, we still prefer the tassel stage window, although uh, in some areas the uh, the V5 to V8 stage is, uh, is giving a nice little kickback, which is good. Uh, nitrogen management continues to be a real, uh, a real key part in high yielding corn and uh, there's, no, there's no silver bullet, it's really understanding your farms and your fields and understanding the nitrogen utilization uh, in those fields and how it works. That goes back to soil tilth which we've talked about in, uh, in previous uh, discussions and uh, soil tilth really being key with the wet June and early July we had this year in terms of root establishment. You need as much root penetration as possible to pick up those, uh, those nitrogen and other inputs that you've invested in. The fields with good soil tilth, uh, rotation was key this year I think. Um, corn on corn yields have been good but uh, not quite the top end that we're seeing on some of the rotated ground in a lot of instances. So uh, the basics we talked about the last couple of years through this project continue to prove themselves again this year. Great. Well, hey, we'll look for some, uh, some numbers when you finally get this crop off. <laughs> yeah, uh, numbers so far with about two-thirds of the sites in. Uh, I'll mention soybeans. We expanded to soybeans this year and through the use of fungicide and some foliar fertilizers we're uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, we're, we're recovering our cost to a small yield increase that's putting some money in our pocket, some, some additional profit. Uh, not quite as steady a, a, a lock in terms of ROI as the corn project has been. Basically, uh, with, you know, 90 plus percent of the sites, a consistent 15 to 25 bushel increase with our high yield recipe uh, with a few added pounds of nitrogen and the fungicide use. Um, and in some cases clearing 30 to 40 bushel increases where situation was absolutely right, where soil tilth was good and, and all the factors came together to produce uh, you know, a nice 10 to 15 acre block of 250 plus bushel core and that's, that's exciting stuff to me when we can do it on a larger scale. Good stuff, as I say, we'll, uh, we'll look for the numbers. Thank you.